Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Mobilite 7 HD Zero. And we've kind of done this before. I've got a 2S version with that classic big chunky micro camera or nano camera, whatever they're calling it at the time. And we've kind of done the Mobilite 7 HD Zero on the channel before. Uh, you probably remember this guy. It looks slightly different, you know, got the red props on there. But this is a conversion of the Mobilite 65 HD Zero. Made a series of video on this. Uh, got the GNB27 connector on it now, but essentially, this is very, very similar, but Happy Model did a little something different with this one. This comes in two versions, Express LRS, of course, and FR Sky still. If you want range, gotta go Express LRS. The other one flight controller is the Super B F4 Lite, which is the same one they used in the Mobula 6 HD Zero. It's got the Whoop Lite VTX, and it's got the Nano Camera Lite in here as well. The motors are EX1002, 20,000 KV. And the props are the Gemfan 1610 40 millimeter, Eye bladed props on 1.5 millimeter shafted motors. I forgot to mention that. It's Super B light does not have connectors, so the motor wires are soldered, and some people will appreciate that, and some won't, because replacing a motor now means you've got to desolder and probably take this board out in order to do that. Also, the battery connector is the PH20. It's the solid pin, but they still wear down over time, and I experienced that a little bit in my time with it. The Moblite 7 HD0 weighs 29 grams flat on my scale. The original Mobula 65 HD0 that I converted into a 75 millimeter frame is 27 and a half grams, or a little less. My 2S version from many moons ago it's over 41 grams. Just like if you were to purchase the Whoop Light VTX from HD Zero, you get this little adapter for firmware updating. It also comes with a screwdriver, the camera back, which just adds weight, or it also secures the cable to the back of the camera, but I'll have another fix for you on that. Prop remover, which I never use, because I just twist and pull with my fingers. Four extra props. It came with more extra screws than this, but as I was getting them out of the bag, I dropped them on the floor, and this is all I could find. It also came with an extra canopy, which these canopies are specific to that nano light camera, because it's taller than most nano cameras. Nope, it didn't come with any stickers. These are the batteries that I spent most of my time flying it on. You can see they're all 450s, but they're from, well, kinda from different manufacturers. There are probably only two companies that make all these batteries. The Tattoo 550 doesn't really fit in that tray. You're gonna have to push it kinda hard to get in there. This one is pretty thick, so I didn't use it. This is my stack of all these sorts of batteries. Because these batteries have a lot more flights on them, I found that mainly this new Xylo battery is the one I use. I have a pack of six of those even though I would mix in these others, and this gave me the flight time that you're going to see in the video. The 550 only gave me about seven or maybe 10 extra seconds at most, but of course, if you fly differently, you may find different results. I use my RadioMaster Zorro to fly this Express LRS edition, and you will hear her later on because she says, battery low. And with this being HD zero, you're gonna need to have a goggles with a VRX like this, or you're going to need to own the Fat Shark Scout HDs, which I don't think are being made anymore, but HD Zero is still supporting them. Or maybe you're waiting for the new goggles, which I'm getting a set of those. As flying inside is my kind of preferred method when it comes to whoops, although I do understand not everybody flies their whoops inside. Uh, we're gonna start with the inside flight. So as I said, I just wanna reiterate that in case you scan through, I did use a newer Xylo battery that doesn't have as many flights on it as others, and something about those Xylo batteries is they are touch longer than the GNB, the Emacs, uh, a lot longer than the Flywoo 450 and the other brands that I showed out there. So as far as its rating, you know, these manufacturers, when it comes to batteries, they kind of play games with the numbers a little bit, you know, ignore C rating stuff. But the genesis of this, this quad is going to require more power. HD Zero requires more power than, say, an analog uh, Whoop. Uh, we've also got new motors, 1002 motors, which oddly I didn't find as linear on the thrust as I have normally find with happy model motors. 
Uh, I use a lot of Happy Model motors on micros because they're very light and they're very efficient. They're not the most durable motor around, uh, but I find them very linear and that's something that I kind of need to, to maintain my flight style. So these aren't quite as linear. They don't have a big lump of thrust at any spot. I just noticed that when it came to doing close proximity stuff, going in and out of the chairs uh, in, the, in the main dining room there, that I had some troubles maintaining my my throttle position so to speak you know i would kind of bump up and down quite a little bit I, and i gave it a lot of flights so it wasn't just like i tried it two or three times and then i was like okay i'm just you know it's too lumpy or something in the throttle no i i get probably 15 20 flights of just doing close proximity stuff because i like to do that as well uh you're seeing that gate that gate is one from uh we bleed fpv uh they're a, a micro company well they're really a whoop company uh, Zotec, many of you will know him, he's quite prevalent on uh, Whoop Racing as well as on Facebook and posting. He's got uh, WeBleedFPV.com, check out their site for any of your Whoop needs. Uh, he's got some great gates over there, that cube gate that you saw down in the basement. I've been enjoying that quite a bit. It's pretty big though. It doesn't fit through an interior door without doing some slight disassembly. You don't have to disassemble the wires. You just gotta kind of pop the PVC stuff loose so you can kind of get an angle and get it through an interior door. Uh, so that's kind of the downside of that. But they have other gates as well, and I've shown them on the channel as well. Other LED gates, other non-LED non gates, and he's got some bigger gates that are almost kind of like three-inch sort of racing gates as well. But this is a little bit anticlimactic for me because the only thing that's really new to this channel is the motors, and we've kind of already talked about those motors. I did ask Happy Model why they went with Biblades, and it was because of flight time. I've said that before on the channel that my theory was that many companies were going with Biblades in some of these circumstances because they were trying to get extra flight time. I presume that's part of what they're hearing from customer base is that they want more flight time. Of course, everybody wants more flight time, but we also want performance. So when it comes to performance, you gotta take a look at that and judge it for yourself. Um, I thought it flew very well. We see the end of the flight, 305, battery come back up, but we had a lot of battery sag in there. My connector at this point is wearing down. You'll see in this outside flight that it's not nearly as bad. In the outside flight, you see when I take off here how my battery sag isn't nearly as predominant outside of that punch out uh, that it was inside because I flew it outside my first couple of days with it. I uh, actually got really lucky and the wind was really low on this particular day. There was a couple of days in there that was a little bit more windy. And so when I dive, I'd kind of get uh, blown around. Or if I do a tree surfing, I get blown around. So I've probably had about 45 to 65 flights on this. And right around that 50 flight marker, I started noticing that I was having troubles with the battery voltage uh, sagging more and more and more. Uh, so that's not Happy Model's fault. That is just the PH20 connector. I do wonder if there's a huge variable in that because I've got other quads sitting on my shelf that have had more flights than this have and I don't think that it is suffering that much. So it could be the overall load of the system as far as electrical load as well as that PH20 connector that we know it just breaks down. It doesn't break down as much as the rolled pin but it still just does break down. So I want to make that a strong point that if you're looking for three minute flight time out of this guy and you fly like I do, then you're going to need to have good, relatively new, fresh batteries. And you might have some troubles even still that you might want to switch to a different connector. If we go to a GMB27 or a BT20, I think you'll find that the battery sag is less, your performance is better, and flight time will be either what you get here or even possibly better. And you don't necessarily have to solder that directly to the board if you get a new pigtail. You can splice that in uh, to just the wires. I know some people are averse to soldering on these boards because if you get them too hot, you can cause damage. It's been a long time problem on these thin little light boards is that we're always trying to make them thinner and lighter. And then if you add too much heat, you get a component that slides or something like that. Next thing you know, you got a board that doesn't work. So uh, if, you, if you want to try a new connector and you want to buy some GNB or BT20 batteries, splice in that connector into the pigtail that's already on there rather than replacing the whole thing directly from the board. Wanted to make sure I did the outside flight because like I said, not everybody flies these inside their houses. And also the pid tune on this, while when you're just flying it, it's fine, it, it's pretty good. But when you do the punches and the recoveries, you may have heard it or seen it. There's a little bit of a shutter. I think we need some additional possibly pid tuning or maybe just TPA adjustment especially on that 100% throttle, the punch out. Um, and I've got some uh, testing where I did some dive testing and I'll show two more of those 
those are, you know, we didn't wash out. So that's a good thing for the pit tune and the powertrain of the system. But, you know, we do get some of those oscillations on 100% throttle, especially when you stay on it a little bit longer. And then at the very bottom, if your recovery isn't really smooth, you'll also get a little bit of a, an oscillation down there. So the pit tune isn't perfect. Um, but I flew it as you see in front of you. You see the battery is popping back up. We didn't get it nearly as low, and we still got a two minute and 51 second flight time, and our battery is at 3.56 and climbing uh, volts. This is where I'll show you a couple more punch outs, and you'll be able to hear the oscillation as well as uh, look at the recoveries, that when we get up there well above the house, we stay on that 100% throt throttle a little bit longer. Oh, and there's a crash too. Uh, I'll put together a crash reel and I'll show that for you as well. Just durability is always an issue that people like to see. Uh, but you see it shudder the, the longer you stay on the throttle up there. So I think uh, a little bit of TPA adjustment uh, should help with that. On the bottom, we may just need to make uh, a different sort of either slider adjustments. Oh. Yeah, I flat on hit that chair. But I wanted to show you that crash with sound because it was my most dr dramatic crash. It was outside, it was at speed, and it <laughs> battery ejection on that guy. Uh, this is just a VTX test for those people that might not be familiar. This is a, a 200 milliwatt VTX. I've got a full review video on this camera and the Whoop Light VTX. I'm just kind of showing myself where I'm at. But this is 200 milliwatts that I'm running it at, as you can see in the top right hand corner. And I just fly around the house. I do try. The, the additional test of flying around my neighbor's house so I get two houses between us and the quad. Uh, that does not go very well, but obviously uh, it's very flyable at 200 milliwatts around the front of my house. We also go over the top of the house, but trying to circle both my house and the neighbor's house, I knew that that wasn't likely going to work, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, I haven't tested this in a while. Let's see if HD zero made some other change and maybe we got some uh, lucky performance increase. Uh, I have to do that on analog. It has to be 400 milliwatts. So uh, I'm not surprised that 200 didn't work, but uh, I kind of forgot I was going to do that additional test. So I did a little bit of general flying there. Now we've gone across my neighbors. Of course, they know we have a text chain that I put together with their permission. And yeah, full rainbow. And then it started to come back right when I disarmed. Full disclosure, Happy Model did send me all the review samples and then I dispersed them or sent them out to all my counterparts throughout the country. Uh, look for uh, Ryan Quillett. You guys know him for HD Zero. He will have a review video. Uh, ATX Airborne. He is probably one of the most enhanced um, video editors that we have in FPV as far as reviews go. So check out ATX Airborne. Uh, Dan Sagano, uh, Skittles FPV will have one, Albert Kim will have one, and I believe Half Chrome will also have one. So I'll link their sites down below and you can check their channels uh, for when they have their videos available and I encourage you to watch them. So I will play my crash reel up here, but do know that that's not a full crash reel. You know, like I said, I've had somewhere between 45 and 65 flights on this thing. I had a bunch of close proximity flights in the house where I was trying to get a hang of the, the precision that's necessary in order to fly through the kitchen tables and chairs. And I didn't really even bother looking at those flights because I considered those bumps. So these are crashes. Some might be mild, some might be wild. It's really going to vary. But in my opinion, I already showed you my hardest crashes, maybe my hardest two crashes with those two uh, that we've already seen in the video. Uh, one of the things I always break is that little piece that goes right here. I break that almost uniformly. If we take a look at this one, I haven't broken that one yet. So what's that mean? Well, probably means that I was flying this one more aggressively for a longer period of time because when I fly this one now, I just kind of fly for general fun and purpose. I'm not trying to push myself necessarily. Every once in a while, I might get a wild hair. But yeah, I generally break one of those battery braces on this frame and the 65 millimeter frame. Now this frame, originally when it started out several years ago, it was uh, one that would break quite a bit. This is like the V4 now of this. Quite durable outside of that little brace. Uh, for me, what I think I need to do is I just need to find a way to get some glue up in there just on the top side. I don't want on the bottom side because my batteries are tight enough. Uh, and while I'm down there, you can see, yeah, that USB port is kind of extending down into our battery area. So every time we come down, we're kind of bonking that USB port. I really think this needs to be another millimeter higher in order to, well, maybe even two or three millimeters because that bow in that is probably a millimeter. So I'd like to have at least a millimeter of clearance. So two, maybe three millimeter. Yeah. Anyways, it's something I noticed and I wanted to draw it out is that, you know, 
it's going to bonk in there. Now, you don't have to necessarily manipulate this to get your USB uh, connected to your, your cable. Your, it's going to... I just kind of... Well, you've got to get it out of the way because it's covering up part of it. I'll just show you what I do. So I use a long nose USB most of the time. So I just kind of get it started. I apply a little bit of pressure here. That way you see it kind of moving around. Come on, do it on camera. There we go. I got it started. And now we've got lights. We've got our connection. So we don't necessarily have to move it far. You can see there's a little bit of a bow. So that's not terrible, nor is it great. It's something I definitely need to call out. While we've got the USB port connected, I wanted to draw your attention to something I noticed, which I don't think I've ever seen any flight controller set up in this particular manner. Look at that. 3.2 kilohertz and 0.8 kilohertz on the uh, gyro and the PID loop. I couldn't tell you why that is. Again, I've never seen it. Uh, we can see down here our CPU load is only 16, 17, maybe even 15%. So the CPU is in good shape. But for some reason, uh, they made this choice. And I thought I should call that out. Because if you're doing any sort of building with this particular all-in-one board, or if you flash the flight controller and you get some sort of oddity or problem that you're not able to solve, I would take a look at these settings and maybe match those to what you're looking at. Also, they have a, I think we've seen this antenna before because I've got one for here, but this antenna, it's very small, it's very light. For whoops, that's good. Um, we've also got this a connector down here for the UFL. This is, of course, for firmware updating. We got that special adapter I showed you in the quick specs. For me, what I would do on this, just like I did on my original, is I would just put a thin skin of, I think I did it on here. Maybe I didn't. No, I sure didn't. <laughs> so what I would recommend, because if you lose this, you're very likely to burn out your VTX uh, before you go pick it up. Um, unfortunately, these v these HD0 as well as, well, really all of our HD sort of VTX and micro VTXs get very, very hot. And they're not very resilient when it comes to losing their antenna. They use that. Um, so I would put a thin skin of my favorite glue over the top, something that's going to add less than a tenth of a gram, even less than that. We just want to give it some extra rigidity. Now, these cutouts here are made to run a zip tie through there. I think a zip tie is actually going to weigh more than using some, say, E6000, just to, like I said, thin skin. And I would also do that for the connector that's on the camera. Because if, e if that pops off, that's bad. And if the connector pops off the camera or the board, which I didn't say it, but I would also put a thin skin around the connector on the board, those things come apart, then you don't get video. So you don't want them coming apart unless you're deciding to work on it, right? Uh, and you also notice in the quick specs, they did include longer screws uh, in these posts. So that firms up this center section, which I think is a, a good move. It's very important. It's how I built mine. I went out to eBay and I found some 10 millimeter uh, screws and they include a couple of new, <laughs> a couple of spare ones, but I dropped the screws on the floor and I only could find two. I think there was four. I think there were two posts and two motors, but that, that could be off. Um, unfortunately, uh, I just can't find them. They're tiny. But the center section is nice and firm, which is a good thing. And they also have adjustable camera angle, which I'm always talking about, and one of those things that I desperately call for manufacturers. But I did break my mount. See? Yeah, it's, can you see it? It's coming apart down there. So this, this part, I broke a post, and I also broke the canopy. Now, I don't know how long it's been like that, because I didn't notice until I got down to the desk and got ready to record this video. So I've got a breakage of the canopy, which we do get an extra one, so be it. But I've also got a broken post right down here. Very likely, in the flight footage of the indoor flight that I showed you, it was already like that because I had a bunch of crashes. Now, this does have smart audio hooked up, but it's not... It, in my opinion, it's not necessary because we can do HD0 uh, or the VTX manipulation with stick commands anyways. Smart Audio just allows you to do it through the typical Betaflight OSD, but it's there if you want to use it that way. Uh, I'll call out one final time, no connectors for the motors, which is good for performance and weight, uh, but when it comes to repairability, if you need to take these motors off, I think soldering in there is doable for some and not for others. So, yeah, you don't want to be melting your frame down, but uh, yeah, you are, if you have to replace a motor for some reason, uh, you are half going to soldering. I mentioned replacing the pigtail or the connector on the battery to a GNB27 or BT20, two of the best micro connectors for batteries. Uh, 
and I mentioned splicing it. If that's not clear, it's just a matter of just, you know, cutting the wires here, splicing in your other connector that is, of course, you don't want a bunch of extra weight and wire. So your GNB27, say you bought a pigtail and then splice that pigtail in and have some heat shrink over the top of it to make sure that they don't touch. And uh, you could do that without soldering directly to the board. And you could also do that without disassembling the quad. Of course, fully test the quad before you do any soldering. So my damage to wrap that up is I broke this post right up front. It's moving around here. And I broke the canopy right up front there as well. And then I broke this battery piece. So yeah, I got some damage, but it's it's all very, very flyable. Matter of fact, if I were to fly this again after I got done recording this video, which I'm sure I will because I love whoops and I think they're really, really good fun, I probably wouldn't do anything to fix those things. I'd just go fly it and have some more fun. But that's just me. I gotta report my experience, right? Now the final question. If you didn't stick all the way to the round of the end, you don't get to know this. <laughs> uh, which one do I prefer? Do I prefer the official Mob Light 7 HD0 or my conversion from the 65mm HD0 uh, up to the 75mm? And I, I prefer my conversion. Um, I could be swayed if we put tri-blades on this. Because I really kind of felt that in the cornering that I had to use more throttle uh, when cornering at speed and tri blades really helps. And this is also a gram and a half lighter, and it matters. And I've got a GMB27 connector on there. It's a little long. I could make it shorter, of course. So I've got less battery sag on this one. But if you're interested in a bite and fly, this is what your option is. Otherwise, I can't even hardly suggest you necessarily do this unless you're an experienced builder either because these wires, this is the conversion by the way, this is the original over there. These wires are kind of shorter than I'd want them to be. You can see they're kind of tight and I clipped off a little part of the frame in order to give it a little bit of wiggle room. So doing the Mobulus 6 HD0 to uh, Moblite 7 HD0 conversion, while it's doable, Maybe you're better off. Check the prices. I'll link them both down below. Check the prices on the Mob 6 HD0 as well as the Mob Light 7 HD0 and look at the price. Uh, of course, these have new motors and you might want these new motors uh, for you know your own purposes. I, 1002 motors is a good choice. I don't think it's necessary on bi blades. I don't think they're necessary for indoor flight unless you're a top elite sort of uh, freestyler, I think they're more for freestyler than they are for racing. For racing, you're going to stay at the top end of the throttle, which 0802, in my opinion, is going to be fine. But, you know, if you're a top flight racer, you probably know better than I do because I don't even race. So I'll put links down below to the places where I can find the Mob Light 7 HD0 as well as the Mobulus 6 HD0. And you can take a look at both of those to see which one you got. You might have caught a little flash of that, that colorful gate that you saw out there. That same company, We Bleed FPV, they also make hot sauce. Now, I'm not a hot sauce guy. I've got kind of a sour tummy when it comes to hot sauce. But my 17-year-old and my wife, they've been using this a lot. Matter of fact, we got Thai food tonight. We loved our local Thai restaurant. My 17-year-old was dousing his Thai in this stuff. So if you like hot sauce and you like micros or whoops, go on over to We Bleed FPV. A little bit of a commercial for them. For your convenience, as I said, I will have the Mobulus 6 HD0 as well as the Mob Light 7 HD0 linked down in the video description if you care to check them out. Uh, I have a coupon code for Banggood, but my understanding is it only works for US and Canada. I have made contact with Banggood and asked them to open that up to many other countries, if not all other countries. Why they do that, I have no idea. I don't even understand the strategy. It would only frustrate your customers. Anyway, I don't want to get on a soapbox about that. I'm a little bit peeved at that sort of thing. It's the second time it's happened. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.